Hello and welcome to the Rod Review. Today I will be reviewing another comic, the first issue of Snowfall, a sci-fi thriller set in a post-climate crisis America. It was written by Joe Harris, designed by Tom Muller, drawn by Martin Morazzo, coloured by Kelly Fitzpatrick, lettered by Michael David Thomas, edited by Shauna Gore, and published by Image Comics in February 2016. By 2045, the climate catastrophe is so bad it no longer snows outside the polar regions, and the world has been reshaped both politically and economically. The USA has morphed into the cooperative states of America, a puppet nation under the heel of the Hazeltine Corporation, a powerful tech company specialising in weather control. By this point, Hazeltine's influence stretches into academia, housing and the security agencies, giving it effective control of the military, resettlement of climate refugees, and university education. The issue begins with the vigilante, the White Wizard, destroying a government weather station in the Hazeltine resettlement of New Mercy. Shortly afterwards, the rebellious young student, Anthony Farrow, arrives at the house of August Reasons, a man he believes to be the White Wizard. Reasons, believing him to be Hazeltine's spy, incapacitates Farrow and abducts him. Using drugs and technology to interrogate him, Reasons discovers that Farrow was inspired by the White Wizard's resistance to Hazeltine and has come to help him. Meanwhile, a TV broadcast breaks the news that there has been a bomb blast at Farrow's university. As Reasons watches news feeds of dead civilians at both the university and New Mercy, the issue ends with him struggling to come to terms with what he has inspired. The issue's main character is Anthony Farrow, a student and rebel. At first I liked that he had an inquisitive look on the world, and, unlike the other students around him, he saw the need for change. However, when dealing with a waitress in the diner, on the way to reasons, we are shown that he lacks any form of tact or diplomacy, which annoyed me, and by the end it's revealed that he set off a bomb at the university. From what we've been shown of Hazeltine so far, his goals seem good, but bombing a villain's unwitting pawns just to make a point is still wrong, even if he did try to encourage people to stay away. The main agent of Hazeltine and the government, shown in this issue, is Inspector Davitica Deal. She is shown to be clinical, intimidating, and apparently has a lot of influence in the government. Since we are not shown any crushed bodies when we see her at New Mercy, it can be reasonably assumed that she orders the deaths of her residents to arouse public hatred against the White Wizard. So far, she seems to be the villain, but given the story's moral complexity, perhaps that will change. Our supposed hero in this is August Reasons, aka the White Wizard, who has the technical ability to create localised snowfalls. He is accused by Hazeltine of bringing death, destruction and climate chaos in the country's past, and so he is often seen as the boogeyman. So far it seems like he has good intentions, but his telling of the story of the sleeping princess and the white wizard between the scenes suggests that he is focused on events in his past rather than changing the conditions of the present. The artwork is reminiscent of Mike Mignola's BPRD and Hellboy series. It's simple but effective, and I quite like it especially the goggles portrayed by circles of light and shadow. My only complaint here is with the drawing of the character's philtrums, you know the groove between the bottom of your nose and the top of your lip. This often makes it look like characters have nose rings or snot hanging from their nose, which is kind of gross and off-putting. The comic incorporates a lot of real-world patterns succinctly into its narrative and world depiction. For example, during a class at Farrow's University, the lecturer touts the signing of corporate personhood into the American Constitution as the moment when prosperity started to return to the country, and through Hazeltine, big business is seen to have control over the government. I found the contrast between Farrow's violent bombing of the university and Reason's destruction of the weather station interesting. While Farrow attacked his target to make a statement, Reasons attacked his as part of a meticulous plan. 
both are resisting but in very different yet similar ways. This is a politically heavy and mature work which I can appreciate, but it's obviously something that is going to put most people off. A lot of it comes down to blurring the normally clean lines between a vigilante, a rebel and a murderer, and between a corrupt and an evil government. I think so far we've been given cliched reasons not to like Hazeltine and the cooperative government, which might allow the viewer to support action against these organisations. However, the problem is we don't currently have any concrete evidence of their villainy to justify that violence. So far, I think the plot looks pretty good. The major points have been kept hidden, but the magnitude of the situation that Farrow and Reasons have ended up in is apparent. I think it's too early to tell what the writer is planning on doing with these two characters or how he will develop the world. Given the heavy political nature of the comic, this is probably something that should be avoided by most readers. But I liked this first issue, and I would be happy to read and review further ones, so I can happily recommend this to anyone with a politically open mind and an interest in sci-fi and apocalyptic environmentalism. Those with none of those traits or interests probably won't find anything here to amuse them, as the characters are not very well developed, and most people kind of look to escapism to, you know, escape the real world. If I was to change some things, I would have stopped the artist from drawing everyone's philtrum, and secondly, I would have made Farrow more socially adept, just to make him a bit more likeable. Anyway, that's it for this episode, thank you for watching. I hope you found it entertaining. As with all YouTube channels, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe and share. And you will hear from me in the next video. Goodbye.